thank you, but we don't need your help. My partner is perfectly capable of destroying this business all by himself. If you had your way, we'd still be making ball gowns for J. Edgar Hoover. I have a family to support. My daughter is starting college in the fall. He's talking about my goddaughter. I wasn't there when she was born. I didn't introduce you to your wife. I didn't catch the bouquet at your wedding. Excuse me, you always ship your clothes in these boxes with the fancy picture on them? Yeah, Rodney's helping a young man through art school. <laughs> I don't see the point of buying this stuff through the mail when your package says, hey neighbor, I'm a frilly boy. I never really thought about that. That could explain our packet for a few wrong address problem. Listen to this man. He is a captain of industry, a commodore of commerce, a general of, uh... My point is, you're lucky you have him here. I'll tell you what I would do. I'd put this stuff in plain brown boxes, mark sporting goods. Keep talking, captain. And now, have you thought about expanding beyond your traditional uh, cross-dressing fellas? What do you mean? Well, you know, there's a lot of big bone gals out there that might like a skosh more room to rumba. Beep, beep, beep. I think I hear the money truck backing up. I know. And then on Thursday night, we were supposed to go to a ballroom dancing lesson, but Edward was working late again at Dharma's little company. I know. And I had to partner up with Florence Rutherford, who, may I say, since her husband's death, has not tended to her personal hygiene. <laughs> I know. He has worked late every night for the last month. I know. What kind of a retirement is this? I know. When I hate sitting alone in that big house. I know. The only good news is that I get to spend so much time with you. I know. <laughs> hey, guys. Sorry we're late. Edward came up with this killer idea where the customers can scan their photo in on our website and then they can see how they look in all the different dresses. I thought we could lure some fellas out of the closet if they could see how pretty they look. <laughs> Could we please not discuss business while we're dining? Dad, Thank you. Why, why don't you uh, ask Mother what she did today? Oh, I'll tell you what I did. I sat by myself in a big, cold, empty house, wasting what are supposed to be the best years of my life. That doesn't sound very interesting. <laughs> Dharma, show everybody your great idea. No, it was not my idea, it was your idea. All I said was what's taking Arthur so long in a men's room. Check it out. Pantyhose with a fly. <laughs> it's part of our new line. Please release me, lingerie for men. Easy in and easy out. <laughs> you ever seen a big lug so happy? Oh, please. Donna, this is just ridiculous. Edward is supposed to be retiring so he can spend time with me. It has nothing to do with his happiness. You listen to yourself. No, I will not listen to myself. You will listen to me. Oh. Stop it. Now, Edward is off. With men who wear dresses, I am dancing with women who smell. And it is all your fault. My fault? Yes. You have ruined everything. I had plans. I had plans for Gregory. I had plans for Edward. I had plans for myself. And then you dropped on us like a bomb. Mother. No, no, there is no more mother. There is only smoke and trouble. Gregory, do you mind if I asked you a rather awkward question? Um, no, sure. Would you wear a dress that had a breast pocket? <laughs> How's your stock doing? Merrill Lynch upgraded it. <clears throat> really? From sucks to bites. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really sorry about what my mother said to you. I take a lot of crap from her, Greg. I know. You know, I mean, I, I may have gotten into this selfishly, but once your father got involved, I think it was really good for him. I know. You know, I would never deliberately do something to hurt somebody. I know. Bombs hurt people. I know. And I'm not a bomb. I know. You know what? I've had it. Kitty is being very selfish about Edward, and I think it's about time someone stood up and said it to her face. Oh, no. You are really being selfish, Kitty. You should see him down there. He's like 20 years younger, organizing everything, rallying everybody together. I've never seen him so.
so happy. So? So? I can't believe you want to take that away from him. Oh, you can't, can you? Well, let me tell you something. For 32 years, Edward's business has come first, and I have come second. Now, all I am asking for is in the time that we have left that I come first, and I don't think that is being selfish. Well, if you were so unhappy all of those years, why didn't you say anything? Dumb -er. You and Gregory plan your lives and make your choices together, and I envy you. That is not what we did. Edward worked, and I waited. That was the deal. Now it is our time to be together, and you have no business interfering. Wow. Well, what? <laughs> I'm so sorry, Kitty. I was totally wrong. <laughs> That's it? I'm right? You're wrong? Yeah. Well, uh, this is a little unsatisfying. <laughs> Punch me in the arm. Oh, oh my god, what should I make it? Child. That's child. You know you want to. Come on! Yeah. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Can I get a lipstick in that ring off? <laughs> yes, I could have. <laughs>